In the United States, African Americans have had a long history of oppression at the hands of whites. Since our arrival in the states as slaves, the path towards freedom in the form of finances and overall lifestyle has been made difficult due to a number of specific laws and policies made against black people. Leaders in the African American community often decided how many people would operate in society as they were very influential and respected. Elijah Muhammad, who established the Nation of Islam in 1931 alongside Wallace Dodd Fard, was such a great leader and his views on religion and the black man caused great controversy, both amongst those within the nation over time as well as those on the outside looking in. A major basis of the beliefs being pushed by Elijah Muhammad was that of being strictly against integration. For Muhammad, the idea was that black people should be self-sufficient as God is black and so was the first man made in his image. As a tactic to be able to truly prevent integration, Muhammad would eventually turn to an unlikely source in the form of the KKK and white supremacists. The move was heavily scrutinized and the doubling down of it by Muhammad only placed a greater strain on many who felt that working with these groups under any circumstances was a poor judgment. Many have never heard of this gutsy and groundbreaking move, making it crucial to understand both how and why Elijah Muhammad partnered with the KKK and other white supremacists in the first place, as well as the consequences the decision had for years to come. Elijah Muhammad was born Elijah Poole in Sandersville, Georgia on October 7, 1897 as the seventh of his parents' 13 children. Having grown up in the South, racism and the subsequent issues that came with it was something Muhammad hoped to escape by moving up north. By his early 1930s, Muhammad had developed strong views on race and religion thanks greatly to influence of Wallace Dodd Fard, who had changed his name to Wallace Fard Muhammad by this time. These ideas led Elijah to establishing himself as a black separatist, with a strong belief belief in the black man being the original man incapable of thriving without having integration with the white race. Information from a PBS article reveals more specifics of the Nation of Islam's origin stating, like Malcolm X's father Earl, Poole left Georgia and came north in search of opportunity and to escape southern racism. He met Fard and one day heard from him that Fard was in fact Allah, or more precisely, the latest in a series of Allahs. Renamed Elijah Muhammad and referred to him as God's messenger, Poole established a new temple in Chicago, the city that will become the Nation of Islam's headquarters. This establishing of the nation in Chicago was crucial, as Chicago was a large enough city for there to be hope that the message would spread quickly and grow the following. Another focal point of the teachings pushed by Elijah Muhammad according to the Britannica piece was that Elijah Muhammad believed that the white race was created by Jacob, a black scientist, and Allah has allowed this race to hold power for 6,000 years. Their time was up in 1914 and that the 20th century was to be the time for black people to assert themselves. Black economic prosperity and other positive developments were all pushed as being owed to black people with Elijah Muhammad consistently asserting the time is now. Serving as a leader under Wallace Muhammad since the inception of the group, a few short years later in 1934, Wallace Muhammad would disappear. Elijah Muhammad would immediately begin his reign as leader following the disappearance and looked to expand the group in a way he could as quickly as possible. Gaining of funding for the group was something that in the eyes of Muhammad would be the only way for black people to get on track or ahead in society. The fourth quarter published an article that speaks on the life of donor H.L. Hunt and gives reason as to why he would agree to work with a black man, stating one of Hunt's chief allies, Alfred Zoe, indicated that since 1936, Hunt advocated deporting all African Americans to Africa. For this reason, Hunt supplied Nation of Islam leader Elijah Muhammad with continuous financial support due to Elijah Muhammad's belief in racial separation from whites. In 1997, Dr. Manny Maribel would publish an article titled Along the Color Line, which would detail the controversial meeting of Minister Louis Farrakhan, Reverend Benjamin Chavis, and fastest racist leader, Lennon LaRouche. Before detailing this meeting in the 90s, the author notes that the Nation of Islam had had a long history of meeting with the white right. At the height of the civil rights movement across the South, many white racists and ultra-conservatives came to the conclusion that the racially separatist views of Elijah Muhammad were clearly preferable to the integrationism of Martin Luther King. Now Hunt was an oil baron, originally from Illinois, who made it big in Texas. The shared idea that blacks and whites should not be together led to the consistency of the support and the billions of revenue gained from being an oil tycoon made Elijah Muhammad rich as he purchased lavish homes and other items for himself from these contributions. Additionally, Elijah Muhammad would end up establishing overseas bank accounts as well as for his assets with many claiming he did this merely out of greed to avoid taxes.
As the years went on, Elijah Muhammad would only become more passionate in his pursuit of preventing integration, hypocritically teaching that the white man was the devil while simultaneously accepting these donations. Information gained from the Southern Poverty Law Center highlights the timeline of Muhammad's actions as it states that, in 1961, Elijah Muhammad, founder of the Black Supremacist Nation of Islam, met with the Ku Klux Klan leaders at Magnolia Hall in Atlanta. Although they had different ideas about the skin color of the master race, they shared the belief that blacks and whites should stay separate. The following year, Muhammad invited American Nazi Party chief George Lincoln Rockwell to address a nation convention in Chicago. Rockwell had gone on record telling his followers that Elijah Muhammad has gathered millions of the dirty, immoral, drunken, filthy mouthed, lazy, and repulsive people and inspired them to the point where they are clean, sober, honest, hardworking, dignified, dedicated, and admirable human beings in spite of their color. Muhammad knows that mixing is a Jewish fraud and leads only to aggravation of the problems that it is supposed to solve. I have talked to the Muslim leaders and I am certain that a workable plan for separation of the races could be affected to the satisfaction of all concerned except the communist Jew agitators. George Lincoln Rockwell Many in attendance were specifically angry at the fact that the speaking of Rockwell took place on Savior's Day, specifically which was Wallace Muhammad's birth date, and a way to commemorate it with the Nation of Islam. Despite the outcry by others in high positions of power within the nation, Elijah Muhammad would speak publicly on the matter rebuking the comments of his peers in the April 1962 edition of Muhammad Speaks. Muhammad Speaks was a newspaper produced by the Nation of Islam from 1961 to 1975 that was widely read and the origins of it would be later taken on by other Muslim leaders such as Farrakhan, showing the popularity and the legacy of the publication. The actions of Muhammad led Rockwell affectionately referring to him one time as the Hitler of black people, which was a statement that many within the Nation of Islam felt showed more of a reason not to work with him or the white supremacists. This meeting between Muhammad with the Klan was greatly frowned upon, with many in society simply believing that there was never a need to work with those that hate black people so much. The language used by Rockwell during his speech doubling down on his disdain for blacks led to many feeling as though Elijah Muhammad was becoming out of control with his power, as it was clear that many devout followers for years within the Nation of Islam greatly opposed this decision, along with some of his teachings of the religion. Muhammad on the other hand was grateful, as there was funding that came as well from these meetings to further prevent integration with whites. Having George Lincoln Rockwell as a donor helped as this lead to Muhammad Farms being established which is a 5,000 acre piece of land located in Terrell County, Georgia. The purpose of this land was to give blacks another place to be comfortably far away enough from white people, much to the delight of all parties involved. The actions of Muhammad resulted in a breaking point for the Nation of Islam. On March 8, 1964, when Malcolm X, who had studied under Muhammad for years, broke away from the group, feeling as though he had a better way of getting black people what they need. He opposed some of the teachings of Muhammad at this point, especially the one that enabled Elijah Muhammad's self-proclaimed title as God's messenger, allowing him to suspend X at the time for speaking to the press for 90 days. A New York Times piece broke the news the day after the formal departure stating Malcolm X broke last night with Elijah Muhammad's Chicago-based Black Muslim Movement and announced that he was organizing a politically oriented Black Nationalist Party. He said the party would seek to convert the Negro population from nonviolence to active self-defense against white supremacists in all parts of the country. As Elijah Muhammad aged, he would find himself at the center of further scrutiny as his reputation of being a spiritual leader would be tested. According to the fourth quarter push, Gladys Tiles Root, the white female attorney who filed the paternity suit against him on behalf of his accusers, knew the Nation of Islam leader was simply passing the buck. He tried to induce an assistant to assume responsibility for the paternity so he could retain his spiritual image on a high plane in the eyes of his followers, Root told reporters at the time. Having had a family of his own, the rumors that Muhammad had fathered two children made many feel as though he were a hypocrite and that his word could no longer be trusted. After Malcolm X had already left the nation, he was still involved with Muhammad as he assisted Gladys in launching her lawsuit against him. The power of the nation proved to be too much as ultimately the case would be dismissed. Although nearly 10 years later, it would be discovered and acknowledged that Muhammad had actually fathered the two children from the lawsuit by his secretaries. The reputation of the women was damaged and by this time, Elijah Muhammad had already passed away. Elijah Muhammad died at the age of 77 on February 25, 1975, leaving behind a documented 23 children, with there being rumors of more. His legacy remains one of the extremes. On one end of the spectrum lies those that believe deeply in the teachings of Muhammad, 
that still see integration as wrong and a belief in what some saw as black supremacy and hate being taught. On the other end lies those that oppose Muhammad's teaching greatly, especially as ideologies grew and members of the nation realized they could create their own faction, the more aligned with what they believed created a good person. The decision to work with the Ku Klux Klan will forever be etched in history for its controversy and the subsequent funding by white supremacists while preaching that they are bad people led many forever to look at Elijah Muhammad sideways. For the goals of Muhammad, one could say the decision was well worth it. However, the story you should know and leave with lies and how it all went down and why I started in the first place.